We have one more differentiation rule to learn, and that is here what's called the chain rule. Let's go ahead and review the rules that we know so far. We learned the four shortcut rules earlier, and in the last couple of sections, we focused on the product rule and the quotient rule. And so let's utilize the rules so far as we know them to take the derivative of this example here, y equals 3x plus 1 quantity squared. So we can take the derivative of it by doing the product rule, or we can FOIL it out completely and take the derivative of it by just using the four shortcut rules. I suggest that you pause the video and take the derivative of this on your own. Okay, so to take the derivative of it by doing the product rule, we have to write out what the product actually is. So it's 3x plus 1 times 3x plus 1. Well, the product rule then, my derivative is the original of the second times the derivative of the first, which is just 3, plus the original of the first, 3x plus 1, times the derivative of the second, which is just 3. Then typically to simplify this, we can distribute our 3 through and expand everything and just combine like terms. Or a little bit better way to simplify this would maybe just to combine. We notice that we have 3 times this here and 3 times this here. So my like term can be considered 3x plus 1. So I can just add my coefficients. 3 plus 3 gives me a 6 times 3x plus 1. Now, if you choose, you can distribute this 6 through to simplify it completely. And so that gives me 6 times 3x, which gives me 18x, and 6 times 1, which gives me 6. So this is the derivative of 3x plus 1 squared. Now, in part b, we could take the derivative of it by multiplying it out completely. So to do that, I would just take this here, and I would FOIL it. So my original function then is manipulated as 3x times 3x, which gives me 9x squared. Outside is a 3x and inside is a 3x, so together that gives us a 6x. And last, 1 times 1 gives me 1. So now I can take the derivative of it using my four shortcut rules. So that gives me an 18x plus and of course, we should end up with the same exact answer that we did in part A because we did the exact same problem. Now, it was fine to take the derivative of this example here by using one of these two methods, but what if my example was something beyond squared? What if, for example, we have y equals 3x plus 1 to the 8th? If we wanted to do the derivative of that, we would have to take this 3x plus 1, and we would have to multiply it out eight different times. So we would either then be forced to use the product rule eight different times, which is definitely not something that we want to do, or we would have to multiply this out eight different times to use our four shortcut rules. And that's definitely something that we don't want to do there either. So what happens when we have something with a higher exponent? How do we take the derivative of it? And so this is why we need this last differentiation rule, which is called the chain rule. So what the chain rule is, is if we have one function, in this case my g of x, inside a second function, my f of x, then we can do a chain rule. So this is called the chain rule because it's like a chain reaction. If we do the derivative of one, then we have to do the derivative of the other as well. So the way the chain rule works is we take the derivative of the outside function. I take the derivative of my f of x, but I keep my g of x as is, and then I multiply it by the derivative of my inside function. So I take the derivative of my g of x. So you need to separate this as outside function and inside function. So one more time, you take the derivative of the outside function, keeping the inside as is, and then multiply it by the derivative of the inside. To help clarify, let's do this example again, but of course now we're going to use the chain rule. 
So the inside function is usually where you want to start to identify these values. So my inside function is my 3x. So that's what's going to identify with all of these g's here. Then if I were to remove that from the situation, so let's just say I got rid of this, whatever I have left over is going to be my outside function. So my outside function then is basically something squared. Well, we think of our variables typically as x, so my outside function you probably want to mentally think of as x squared. And that is what's going to identify with my f of x, or my outside function. Okay, now to take the derivative of it. First, the notation. If we have y, my derivative notation is dy dx. And so now I need to follow my chain rule. The chain rule says the derivative of my outside function. So I need to take the derivative of f where my f was this exponent, or we think of something as x squared. So if you thought your f of x as x squared, then the derivative of it would be 2 times x. But the problem is, is it wasn't actually x squared. It was this piece here. So instead of using x, I need to use whatever I had in those parentheses. I need to keep my inside function as is. So the derivative of something squared is 2 times that something to the first power. I bring my power down, and then I subtract a power. So now I need to keep my something the same. I need to keep my inside function the same. And so my inside function was a 3x plus 1. That was this, that identifies as that there. That's the first half of my chain rule. Now I need to multiply that by the second half of my chain rule. I need to multiply it by the derivative of my g function. Well, my g function was the inside function. So I'm just going to write this out. So times the derivative of this 3x plus 1. So I'm going to do a prime. Okay. Now, don't get confused. This is prime to do derivative, and this is my first power here. So, to actually take the derivative of my inside function, the derivative of 3x plus 1 gives me 3. So, the derivative of the outside function with the inside staying as is times the derivative of my inside function. All right, now we just need to simplify this. So what I see is I see a constant times something times another constant. So I can go ahead and multiply these two constants together. 2 times 3 gives me 6, and then I have that multiplied by 3x plus 1. Now, if you remember, this was the exact same thing that we got by simplifying the product rule, 6 times 3x plus 1. And then we said if we want to simplify it by distributing it through, that would be perfectly fine. And so that would give us 18x plus 6. So one more time, we have the derivative of this problem giving us the exact same answer because we did the exact same problem just using a different method. So... I have introduced the chain rule for you. If you need to see more examples over it, I encourage you to watch the next video.